you. This is Darla Tuttle, your host. The information conveyed in today's presentation is for informational purposes only. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell any trading instrument, and the opinions given by our presenter may change without notice at any time. We are recording this session, and we will publish it to Trader Planet's video section tomorrow, so you will be able to review this material again whenever you like. If you're new to attending Trader Planet webcasts, welcome. You'll be pleased to know that we have previously recorded sessions on our site at www.traderplanet.com. Now, our presenter has set aside time at the conclusion of his lecture for a question and answer session. To submit your questions for consideration, please use the questions pane. Uh, he will also have staff available should a question come to mind during his lecture. So kindly type your questions there and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Our guest presenter, Mark Sachs, has a PhD in finance from the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School of Business. He is a former professor at Jefferson College, Philadelphia. He has been involved in the financial markets for over 20 years. Right line trading software is a product of over a decade of price action, market structure, and indicator algorithm analysis and optimization. The software is one of the fastest growing trading systems on NinjaTrader. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Sachs, founder of Right Line Trading. Uh, thank you so much, Darla. And um, I really appreciate your um, allowing me this, uh, this time. Uh, and, and I appreciate every, everything that uh, Trader Planet has done. And, um, and thanks again. And thank you, thank you everybody in the, in the webinar for, um, for attending. Um, and uh, Darla gave you a, a little bit about my background. I'm a, a former professor at Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And I've been involved in the financial markets for over 20 years. Uh, I began trading the futures and forex markets about 10 years ago. And my background uh, involves, uh, uh, I did my thesis on the, on the optimization of, um, of multivariable equations. And, uh, and back when I was training, um, computers were pretty primitive. And in fact, I believe the only one in the world that was operational was at University of Pennsylvania. So it was a very, very novel uh, way to solve uh, complex uh, uh, closed system problems um, was to allow a computer to solve a multivariable equation. And, um, and that's, it, was, it was this kind of methodology uh, that we applied to, the, to, uh, to day trading the markets. And what we did, we, we um, uh, devised a method of mathematical modeling. And we're at www.rightlinetraining.com. Now, I'm just going to skip this. And um, let me just talk to you a little bit, a, a little bit about indicator and how analysis. The first thing is, is that day trading the markets, I think it is, and, and swing trading for that matter, but more specifically day trading is a pretty unique endeavor. And if, if we understand that close to 95% of all of the traders who begin to day trade wind up losing their account. And that number never improves over time. That 95% seems to be static and non-improving. And, the, and, and, the, and nobody asks the question as to why we tolerate such an enormously high failure rate uh, and why people don't learn from the previous set of people who wound up losing their accounts. I mean, why doesn't that figure improve over time? Why aren't people building on the mistakes of the past to improve this endeavor? Now remember, we're, we're, there are really two sets of traders in, in, in the day trading arena when you open up any financial uh, instrument. There are the commercial traders, like us, we are the small volume traders, and they're, they're the institutional traders, or the big volume traders. Now we cannot beat the institutional traders. 
Uh, they trade with huge lots, and they do something that we can never do. And that is, these are the people or the, or the groups of traders that create the trend. If they decide that they want to buy crude oil, they are going to create an uptrend in crude. The only thing that we as commercial traders can do is try to get on board with them. Now, if 95% of commercial traders are losing money on a daily basis, almost all that money is going into the hands of the institutional guys. A small amount of it is going into the hands of other commercial traders because we are never taking money from the institutional guys. So that's why 95% of, of commercial traders fail. They're simply using an analysis, they're using software techniques that have never been shown to be effective. And what's happening is we take a priori that certain indicators are going to work without any scientific validation. I mean, if you ask yourself, why do you believe, why do you potentially believe that a stochastic oscillator has any ability to predict the future movement or price movement of any financial instrument? And the answer that you're going to give yourself is because somebody else told you. And it's the same thing with a MACD. If you tr are trading using a MACD, why do you believe it has any ability to predict the future movement of price on the financial instrument that you're trading? And the answer has to be because somebody else told you it does. Now, what I did when I first entered this industry and first decided to, to really apply what I, what I knew to day trading was to do uh, a Nexus Lexus search, which, bring, which basically embodies all of the published literature in the world, in all languages, in any halfway decent authoritative journal. And if you look at the scientific information that people have accumulated in which they, it, it, they verify uh, uh, statistically, that these indicators have a positive predictive value, i.e. that they have the ability to increase the precision with which you're trading or provide you with information that is more likely to give you a winning trade, it's just not out there. So what I need you to do during this webinar is to suspend your belief in everything that you've been taught. Now, if you have been taught that oscillator signals or, or indicator confluences have the ability to provide you with information that, again, predict the future movement of price, the chances are that that assumption is false. And you're walking the same path that has led 95% of all the people that preceded you to lose all of their money. In order to change the trajectory uh, or failure rate, we have to create a new trading paradigm. And we have to question everything that we've ever been taught about, about day trading and price movement. And, let me, and let me give you an example. A lot of people put a lot of stock in the stochastic oscillator. Um, the, stat, the stochastic oscillator, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows there are many different kinds of oscillators. There's the stochastic, uh, there's relative strength, there's the CCI, uh, there's Williams K, and I'm sure there are others. Now, the stochastic oscillator, in order first to do any kind of evaluation with it, you have to know a little bit about the formula in which the K line is, um, is traced. And you need four variables in order to create an accurate stochastic oscillator line. Of every formation, and a formation can be a candle, a, an open high-low close, uh, it can be a, um, 
uh, a kagi. There are lots of different kinds of formations. Most of us trade with candles, but some of us do use, um, use uh, open high-low close. The point is you need four numbers to create an accurate stochastic oscillator line. And that is you need the high, the low, and the open, and the close of each of those formations. And as the high approaches the open, or the low approaches the close, the oscillator line moves up or it moves down. But it's a comparison be between the open and the high and the close and the low. Now, I've seen a lot of software that uses a stochastic with standard Renko bars. Now, if you'll notice, now this is a, these are range bars. Now, the range bars have a high, a low, an open, and a close. And this stochastic line, the yellow line is the K line, is accurate. But I've seen a lot of software use a stochastic on Renko bars. Now, this is how far off and how broken, unfortunately, um, this industry is. Now, the Renko bar doesn't have an open or a close. It just has a high and a low. Without those other numbers, this K line is simply tracing out the exact price, is, 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 trading, is tracing exact price movement. And it has absolutely no value. And I cannot tell you the number of traders that I see use the stochastic on standard Ranko. Now that system, if they believe the stochastic is going to give them an accurate overbought, oversold signal, is 100% doomed. It is going to do nothing. The price is driving the stochastic, and the stochastic has no predictive value in determining future price. And in fact, this stochastic line is broken. Now, the thing that we did here at Right Line is before we encompassed any indicator analysis into our platform, we asked ourselves the question, does an oscillator actually give you any, any reasonable information? So what we did is we, um, on Ninja, you can do it, uh, two years of market replay, and we added a stochastic, uh, and we did two years of market replay, and we did it over and over and over again. And what we found is that the stochastic, when it's driven by price on your trading chart, provides you with absolutely no useful information whatsoever. And it should be eliminated. Now, and let me give you a, a good example. There's, there's now no indicator should be able to have multiple interpretations. It should either tell you to buy or sell, but the oscillator, this is relative strength, is traded by different groups of traders in a different way. Half of the people, when the market is overbought, say to themselves that in an overbought market, the bulls are firmly in control. And what they do is they continue to buy the market every time each high pivot is broken. They believe that there's going to be follow through to, to whatever target that they, cho that they have chosen, whatever ATM strategy they have chosen, and the market is going to continue to the upside. So they take an overbought signal as a cue to continue to buy long. Other group of traders look as an overbought signal, look, look at an overbought signal as an opportunity to go short. And what they do is they look for divergence, where relative strength make, makes a lower high and price makes a higher high. And with that signal, they look to reverse the market and, cre and take it in the opposite direction. And who's right? Um, do you trade uh, oscillator divergence and look for a reversal? 
or you do, or do you trade an overbought market by continuing to buy to the upside? Well, it turns out that when you have a group of traders doing one thing and another group of traders doing another, uh, the most likely answer is that it really that that the oscillator doesn't really work at all, and it's really just a hit and miss. All of us here trading know that the diver a divergent signal is a very iffy signal. So this one got run right over. Some of them work and some of them don't work. Sometimes when if you if you continue to buy an overbought market, it will continue to break high pivots. Other times it's going to reverse on you and stop you right out. So when an indicator signal gives you that kind of success rate, its precision is too low to, to make you or add to your add to the ability to create success. And therefore it must be discarded. And that is exactly what we did. We we threw out the indicator completely because whoever made it, and a lot of people who make these indicators, it, they intuitively look good. And and you feel like they're going to work, but they're never tested a method in, in a really scientific, uh, methodological manner that statistically determines that these indicators provide all of us well, with unique trading signals that allow us to achieve profitability. And that's the problem with the oscillator. It looks good and it smells good and it tastes good. But then when we go to eat it, 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 it creates acid, it creates indigestion. And it just doesn't work. Now another indicator is the famed Fibonacci. Now this one, I mean, I call, I call there are people who swear by Fibonacci. And they trade it and they trade it and they trade it. And they've, and they've been Fibonacci traders around for 25 or 30 years. And I don't know one person who's profitable trading Fibonacci. Now Fibonacci was a mathematician, I think he was, in, who was, who was around in the 16th or 17th century, long before um, the, the stock market was around. And, and, and he really, he discovered a, a unique set of numbers and created from those numbers a unique set of Fibonacci transformations. And somebody at some point in history decided that these Fibonacci numbers will actually describe price movement in the stock market. Now, in nature, Fibonacci describes the number of, uh, of edges on a snowflake, and it describes the number of spirals in a pine cone, and it does have some interesting properties. But in nature, it doesn't describe any useful interaction between any kind of closed system, i.e., um, if you look at uh, at Planck's constant, or you look at um, um, the uh, a lot of the equations by he I uh, Heisenberg and uh, and Einstein, they describe the way that the, that the the universe, which is in essence a closed system, or the interaction of particles, they actually describe how things move in nature. Fibonacci describes nothing of any useful value in nature. So why was it ever applied to price movement in the stock market? I have no idea. And apparently the one person just did it, told the next person, who told the next person, and it just seems so elegant and so nice that people have adopted it and they worship it. And we did the same thing with it. We looked at a year two years actually of market replay data from Ninja and we looked and we saw what, whether Fibonacci levels hold or are broken and the answer was that sometimes they hold and sometimes they break but they don't hold with enough precision to allow you to take it as a signal to avoid it. Now, listen, that's true for any moving average, and we don't want to trade into a moving average. But, the, but trading into Fibonacci or assuming that price is going to move from one Fibonacci level to the next is just not borne out when, it's, when scientific 
uh, dogma is applied to the way it works. And if you look in the world literature, there isn't a single article ever written that shows that Fibonacci in any way can describe the movement of price on, on any financial instrument. Now, if we went into any other industry or any other scientific endeavor, um, we looked at medicine or architecture or um, anything for, I mean, I, I can't think of anything more than that. And we just, and we um, created buildings or treated patients just because we felt the medicine works or we believed an architectural principle works, but it was never shown. I mean, look at all the testing that a medicine has to go through. Nothing is taken as being intuitively obvious that a medicine's gonna work. Nothing in architecture is being intu intuitively obvious that a 200-story building is gonna stay erect and not topple over just because people think that the architectural principle works. There's an enormous amount of scientific rigor applied to all of these things before it's used to create um, a structure or before a medicine is used and given to a human. But yet we take all of these things as acts of faith when we day trade. And the only reason we do is because we're told by people who were told by someone else that all this stuff works. And the fact is, it does not work. So what is the predictive value? And what we found was this. Now, I don't have the slide for it, but we just did this information on the MACD. Now, the MACD, I felt, was almost certainly going to provide us with useful information on a MACD crossover to the upside, the market would continue on with a sensitivity and specificity that allowed us to use the signal with confidence to help us trade. And I felt a crossover to the downside would give us a short with some degree of confidence and allow us to trade it. I don't have the slide, but what I found is that the MACD simply doesn't work when it's driven by price on your trading chart. So I'm not really sure, although we haven't looked at every indicator, that any indicator is of any value when it assimilates data from your trading chart only. And I'm telling you, if you trade the MACD crossover on your chart based on price action on your chart, it will not work. And it's as likely to fail as it is likely to be successful. And when, when, when it's a toss-up, you're, you're definitely going to lose money. So what is the predictive value of any indicator that assimilates data from your trading chart only? And what is a pre the predictive value of any indicator that works sometimes, but not other times, i.e. it's hit and miss? It doesn't work 80% of the time or 90% of the time. It works half the time. It works 60% of the time. Well, the fact is, the predictive value, it has a number, but its utility as an indicator is zero. And this is why 90% of us who try to day trade or swing trade using this kind of analysis fail. And it's because all we do is we use variations of the same theme. Somebody creates a MACD with new inputs, a stochastic with new inputs, Fibonacci confluences. And remember, if the initial presumption that Fibonacci is not effective, then creating Fibonacci confluences is not going to be effective either. And that's why so many of us fail. I mean, at the worst, this should be 50-50. 50% of commercial traders should lose, and 50% of commercial traders should win. And the number is so outstandingly worse that that's why we have to really uh, question every single um, supposition and tenant that we've used to day trade with in the past. And that's really what we've done here. Now, 
I'm going to talk a little bit um, about algorithmic trading. And actually, I'm going to wait on this because I really want to talk, first of all, about the kind of indicators that we use at RightLine and the kind of indicators that have we have shown on a statistical basis after a significant amount of analysis actually provide you with excellent predictive value and precision and allow you to trade with a positive predictive value of 75 to 85 percent or if not better. Now the, the key is is that none of them assimilate data from your trading chart. They all assimilate data from multiple higher time frames. And the first one I wanted to show you was background bias. Now when you get this dark pink color, and I'm going to show it to you on our trading charts later, it tells you that your two higher time frames are trending to the downside. And that means that the 50, the simple um, moving average SMA 50 and our proprietary 15-day uh, is red and heading down. It also tells you that all support to the downside has been broken. But it's not information that's being accrued from your trading chart. It's being accrued from two higher time frames. And we call this a time frame alignment. When your two higher time frames align to the downside, the likelihood that your price on your trading chart is going to move to the downside is exceedingly high. And a continuation signal to the downside has a tremendously high uh, predictive value of being successful. And the reason, again, is, is price falling doesn't turn this background pink. The pink background tells you that price is likely to fall because nothing that takes place on your trading chart creates this pink background. This pink background is, is created by multiple higher time frames. So one, you certainly don't want to trade against it. Uh, and two, when you get a good signal to take short, you're going to take it short. And that short trade has a very, very high likelihood of success. This is the kind of indicators that we use. We've tested it and done a tremendous amount of analysis on it, and it works. Now, we also have the same for the, for the up. The up is uh, dark green. That's when all uh, resistance to the upside is broken, and the 15 and the 50 are moving up. And bias consists of three down colors and three up colors, each giving you uh, a really good feel for how successful the trade is going to be uh, to the upside or, to, or the downside. When there is no color, it means you have no time frame alignment. And this is really a chop area because the higher time frames are all moving in different directions. And when, that's, when that happens, um, the ability to take a long trade or short trade, the predictive value of a, of a long or a short trade, really, really false. You want to trade markets that are aligned to the downside on your higher time frames or aligned to the, to the upside on higher time frames. Now, here's another indicator that we use. Now, multi-market analysis is really the wave of the future. You want to determine which markets have a correlation coefficient with the instrument that you're trading with, with with a value of 0.7 or greater, i.e., this is a, this is a um, a chart of uh, of bonds, ZB. Now it's tough to trade bonds, but we've made it easier, a lot easier to trade. And we use a three range chart, and what we found are six markets that have a correlation coefficient of 0.7 or greater. And I can give you one correlative market right now. Now, bonds are usually an instrument that goes up when people use it as a flight to safety. When, um, when equities are falling, bonds usually go up. When treasury notes go up, bonds usually go up. So right there, I've given you a bunch of correlative markets. Now, correlative markets, what do they tell you? Um, you can see the green. Uh, and you can see the yellow, and you can see the red. But what are they telling you? They're simply assessing money flow. When the lines are green, 
money is flowing into bonds and all the correlative markets that should rise when bonds rise and are flowing out of all the correlative markets that should fall when bonds rise. Now, each of these three lines contain three individual markets. So when you have green and green, it's telling you that six markets are correlating in the appropriate direction to push bonds to the upside. So when bonds rise, it's simply an indication of money flowing into bonds and its correlative markets and flowing out of those correlative markets that should fall when bonds go up. So the fact that price on your trading chart goes up is in no way, in no way affects the color of these quant lines. And the reason we call them quant lines is if one market has a correlation coefficient of 0.9, we quantify its weight in the line. So it has a higher throw weight, so to speak, in the line. If the correlation coefficient is, it's got to be 0.7 or greater. If it's 0.7, we quantify or weight it less in these two lines. So that's why we call them quant lines, and I think that confuses people, um, but that's what it does. So you'll see right here, during this, this period here, where you'll get green and green, price goes up, and if you get a nice signal on a long trade, the likelihood of getting a positive signal is extremely high. This increases the predictive value of, of the system. It increases the sensitivity, specificity of the trade. And that's when you want to trade. And again, the price on your trading chart has no effect on the color of, uh, of these lines whatsoever. They're, they're, they're determined by other, um, by other factors. Now, here's one other thing that I want you to keep in mind. I've gone into many, many other um, webinars. And the only question I ever ask, because you know, it's not my job um, to, to police the internet and um, do due diligence for anyone else, or my job you know, to, to, to critique other people's software. But the only question I think that's important to ask any developer or anyone who's proffering software to you is what is the sensitivity of a long signal? What is the specificity of a long signal? And what is the positive predictive value of a long signal? If they can't tell you that information, then the system itself has no value because these are mathematical parameters that must be known in order to proffer it to you as a successful trading system. And if they don't know the numbers, then they can't even tell you that it trades successfully if you follow all the rules. And I have yet to find anybody who knows these numbers. That's the problem that's out there. Now, I haven't asked everyone, but the people I have asked cannot tell me those, those um, three variables. Sensitivity, specificity, and positive or negative predictive value. They have to be determined. Now, before we go here, I just want to tell you, let me go back to one thing here. I don't even think I have it here yet. Okay, what I want to um, um, talk to you about is prevalence. It's another mathematical term, but it has significant uh, ramifications for how we day trade. Now, when is the prevalence or the likelihood of a long signal to follow through? And when is the prevalence or likelihood of a short signal to follow through? And the answer is in a trending market. In a choppy market, the prevalence or likelihood of a follow through long or follow through short markedly drop. So it's extremely important 
how you define chop because you never trade a choppy market because a choppy market doesn't have the kind of prevalence you need to trade successfully and remember I know I'm throwing all these numbers at you but I really just want to give you the gestalt of day trading in that the positive predictive value of taking a trade is the sensitivity over specificity but it's times prevalence so prevalence is a very very important number so how do you define the trend well, we define it very carefully. When the 50, SMA 50 is down, and when our proprietary 15 day is down, we know that the market is trending down and the prevalence of a continuation trade and follow through is going to be high. If you look here, when the modified 15 is yellow, that defines CHOP for us. And we cannot trade a non-trending market. Now, what we've done is we've created a line that consists of three lines. And when I first started, well, they used to splay, and we've, we've modified it. And it used to look like a piece of rope untangling at the end. And you could see three little lines hanging out. Now, the market can make some, some occasionally some big moves with, with the yellow modified 15. But the point is, when you trade with specificity, you trade with the ability to get winners and eliminate losers. And therefore, on mo potentially on potential moves you can't trade, you've got to let them go. And that it comes back to this principle. If you trade with sensitivity, i.e., try to get into every market move that you can, you're going to get wiped out. But what you have to do is trade with specificity specificity and with, with sensitivity you're looking for every um, true positive but if you look for every true positive you're gonna walk yourself into a lot of false positives what you do is you trade with specificity you look for true negatives you want to eliminate the losers you want to eliminate the trades that don't follow through that is a real negative a true negative or a trade that doesn't follow through and would, would give you a loser and if you trade with a tremendous amount of true negatives you will almost eliminate the false negatives now what's the worst thing that can happen to you if the, if the worst thing that can happen if you trade with a lot of sensitivity look for every true positive every time you miss you get a false positive and you get stopped out you get a loser. What's the worst thing that can happen if you trade with significant specificity and you're looking for all the true negatives? Well, you get a false negative. And you know what? The market goes up 25 ticks and you're not in the trade. But so what? You've let a winner get by you, but it doesn't cost you any money. And the ultimate result is you, when you trade with specificity, specificity is you garner much much more many many more winning trades and you filter out the losers so that's the worst that can happen to you when you trade with a high degree of specificity you miss a good move the worst that can happen to you when you trade with a high degree of sensitivity is you've put yourself into a lot of losing trades so you want software that's going to define price movement into the future that shows you prevalence and increases the sensitivity and specificity together to give you a great positive predictive value. That's the math of day trading that nobody cares about and nobody looks at. Now, the other indicator that's also extremely important that we rely on heavily is market profile. Here's the value area high. Here's the value area low, and here's the point of control. And just briefly, for all the people that don't know what market profile is, price at, at volume, 70% of all volume at price is encompassed between the VAH, value area high, and VAL, value area low. Now, not all market profiles are the same. If the market profile encompasses only the price on your trading chart, 
it is not going to be particularly effective until later in the day as it accumulates volume. So you need a look back period. Now, if you look back too far, then volume profile becomes almost like a battleship. The lines become too sticky and they don't want to move when volume at price should be moving. So the proprietary look back period is very, very difficult to optimize. How many days, you can't use it just on price on your trading chart. You can't use anything based on just price on your trading chart. You can't look forward uh, with market profile, but you have to look a proprietary number of days backward. And that number, that look back period is really a proprietary number, and that's what our market profile does. It moves with significant specificity. And it does something that most market profiles don't do. It calculates intra-bar. So you don't take a trade and then the market profile jumps and you trade right into a value area high. It's the new value area high. So it, it, it's, it, it calculates the VAH, VAL, and POC intra-bar and it has a proprietary look-back period to give it real specificity. It doesn't just assimilate data from your trading chart. Now, accumulating back data is tough on Ninja because Ninja Trader is one of the few platforms that doesn't itself accumulate data. The whole indicator has to. But the number of days back is, is something we spend an enormous amount of time looking at and optimizing the uh, many, many, many trials on, um, on uh, market replay. The other thing is the distance, everyone has the same point of control. We looked at many, many market profile indicators. That's simply the price that has the most volume. But the VAH and VAL are different on a lot of market profiles. Some have them at 67, 66.6%, um, .6%, which is one standard deviation away from the mean. Others have them at 70%. We have it at a proprietary distance away. And it's right in that range, but that small percentage makes a really big difference in the outcome of your trades. So we really worked hard. And what we did was the same thing that we do with everything else. We don't take for granted that a market profile is a market profile. There were a million open source market profiles we could have just stuck in as ours. But I think that we have the best market profile out there because we spend so much time and work on not assuming that price on your trading chart is enough and not assuming that the VAH and VAL are going to work off, off of your um, price on your trading chart and checking to see what the optimal distance is between the two. Now, again, we define a downtrend. Remember how important the trend is is when the 50 is down and the 15 is down. That tells us we're not in chop and increases the prevalence of getting a follow through trade. And what we defined are areas where we're very, very heavy into market structure and price action, although we're not dogmatic price action traders because price action traders don't use indicators. Consolidation is one of the most powerful setups that you can get and we have a proprietary consolidation indicator it's one of the few system generated signals we have price almost always breaks out of the consolid out of consolidation in the direction of the trend now what's going on in consolidation is a lot more than just the fact that um volatility is dropped what's happening here is it's trapping traders these are all the traders going short. Now, if you were a trader and you were in a downtrend, you would enter a trade to the short side. So these are all the smart guys. And these are going to be all the commercial traders who trend trade. These guys are all the commercial traders who really don't understand how to day trade because they're counter trend trading and they're calling a bottom and they're calling a reversal. They believe that this is as far as, I believe this is crude oil, but it doesn't matter. They believe that this is as far as this instrument's gonna go, they're calling a bottom. And they believe it's gonna reverse, and the trend is going to change. And 
any time you counter trend trade and call a top or call a bottom um, or try to call a reversal, you're going to get hammered. And that's why consolidation pushes through so hard because everyone, the longer the period, the more traders caught in the counter trend direction. And when it finally breaks through, all these traders are stopped out. And as they get stopped out, they continue to push the trade to the downside. So sellers are added and all these buyers get stopped out. When they get stopped out, they have to sell their shares. And when they sell them, it pushes the market to the downside. You see, here's another counter trend candle. You can go down right here out of this retracement right to resistance. Now, these are a little bit more complex. Um, so what I want to do right now is I want to go to the, um, to the software. Uh, let me just um, close this for a second. Hold on one second. Here we go. Let me drop this and then drop this and let me show you our software. Now this is really how I trade. Now I'm going to show you the trades that we took today. And this is in a live market in the trading room this morning. And really that's where the pedal, that's where the, the, the pedal hits the metal. It's what you do in a live market. It's not trading opportunities. It's not all the baloney that you sometimes see. It's how we day trade the market in a live trading room setting um, in a trading room. Nothing else really matters. And let me find, I'm just scrolling here. Okay, right here was our first trade. right here whoops now this is a different kind of trade than I've really talked to you about but we went short right here now this is a more complex and I don't want to get into into really complex setups but this is a retracement see this is the move down here's the retracement we look for 100% retracements, but they've got to come or close to off of an area of resistance, which was the 50. And it really is our counter trend type of counter trend trade. But remember, the trend is down. This is the counter trend move, and all we're looking for is for the downtrend to resume. We took the trade short. We go, we're in one tick below the, clo the close of the candle, and we made 30 ticks. The next trade that we took, now there are trading opportunities here I didn't take for one reason or another. I didn't take this short here because it was into a pivot. And I didn't take this short here because the market was oversold. And they were both successful. But remember what I said about specificity. It didn't meet our rules. And the fact that these trades were successful, so what? We're filtering these trades. And the one thing we don't want to take is a loser. So we waited and weeded. Now let's see the next one. I passed it. Was oh, right here. Actually came first. It was a break of the modified 15 and then a retest right here and you see this candle comes down and completely engulfs the previous candle and we went short and you'll notice the trend is background bias is red our quant line is red all the indicators were used to help us with precision and the trade went down 27 ticks so we had a 27 tick trade and then we had a 30 tick trade here and then we had one more and then we close and then we quit let me find it it was right here uh, let 
Oh, I'm losing it here. Of this one. I just want to hurry up here because I don't want to. It was right here, the same thing. Break, retest, short. This is called a dark cloud cover. And learning market structure, price action is extremely important. I mean, we're down for 18. On the E-mini, we took a loser. And I'll show you the loser. I'm not going to hide those or try to tell you, okay, that we don't take some trades that lose. Because we do. And it was a perfect trade. And I don't have a whole lot of time. It's right here. And then after this, I'm going to move off and I'm going, now this is the trade I should have taken. These quant lines on the E-mini are extremely powerful. But I took this trade. The retracement to the value area low, triple quants, and the trade went nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. So the next trade I took, and that was our loser for the day. And then the next trade I took was right here. The break, retest, I went short here. Boy, it gave us a lot of heat. And then it went down almost two points. So that, that was our trading. We had enormous trades on crude, and we had uh, one loser on the E-mini and a nice winner. Now, let me go back to the slides. Here we go. And talk to you about two ways you can trade. Now, this is, a, this is a trade we took in the trading room. You can see it went 19 ticks. It's a retracement to resistance. All three quant lines are red. Background bias is red. Candles outlined in order flow and momentum, which tells you that order flow and momentum are aligned to the downside. Down it went for 4.75. Here's another trade we took to the upside. Again, all three quant lines are green. It tells you that order, you know, money is flowing in. All the correlative markets are with us, up for 3.75. Here's a short trade down for 3.5 points. We, and, but you see how we leverage background bias and the quant lines. Very important. And there's not much else that's going to really be of benefit. This is our NTD. This, this is patent pending. This is our trade execution platform. Um, this is how we trade. We buy an up close, we sell a down close, and even, even with range bars, you have a really good idea where you're going to close. But if you trade tick or time, you never know exactly where you're going to close. But this tracks the trade, and as soon as the candle closes, it fires in a market order, and you're almost going to get uh, the close, one tick below the close of the candle, exactly. You can also uh, form it, um, format a one tick pullback. So the trade triggers on the one tick close below, and then it's got to pull back a tick to give you an entry, to give you a one tick premium. And then we trail it with a close on a down close on an up move or close on an up close on a down move. It is tremendously beneficial to trade. Now, at right line, um, we never ask you to pay for boot camps, seminars, lectures are free. Um, now, we, we, we always give free upgrades um, when we upgrade our indicator packages. And these are yours as part of becoming a member of the Right Line Trading family. Now, let me just show you that there are two ways to trade the system. One is, now again, we do not uh, trade tops or bottoms. We don't trade potential reversals. We don't counter trend trade. We do not trade potential breakouts. We trade retracements and a multi time frame confirmed trend with no multi time frame structure and alignment. And I could add right here with the quants and alignment. And really, what it is, it's, it's, is 
it, it's a tr it, it really is a simple trading platform, and it's been optimized mathematically to provide you with markedly accurate trading entries. We know the positive predictive value of every single entry we take. We can estimate it as we take the trade. Now, let me just show you. There are two ways that you can take that you can trade. It. One is discretionary. If I can find the discretionary. Let me just find the algorithmic. Okay, now what we've developed is an algorithmic system. Now, at the time I made this slide, we had 40 win, 20 winners and four losers. It was trading with an 84% um, win percentage. And what it does is it trades for you automatically. And you don't have to do anything. It actually adjusts your targets based on the average true range. And it does everything. It sets the trailing stop by uh, when you're moving up. It'll close on the first down uh, on the down candle, first down candle. Right uh, right now we have it active on seven markets. Since I put up the slide, we've added one market, and it's natural gas. We're going to be adding the Dow, and we may add the Russell depending on volume. And we're going to be adding one additional parameter to the algorithmic, and that is volume. On low volume periods, it's going to turn off. And on decent volume periods, it's going to turn back on. It is not going to be caught in a low volume period because there's no follow through. Now, the other way you can trade the system is, is what we have done is we've created what's called a dashboard. Now, we already know that each of the independent variable, variables that we show have significant uh, importance in for you taking a short or a long trade. Now, you can't watch seven markets at the same time or eight, or nine, or 10, because eventually the dashboard is going to have an enormously number high, enormously high number of markets. But this row projects the background color of the market or the bias. When it's dark pink, you know that you have an alignment of multiple time frames to the downside. When it's dark green, you know the market's dead. I can't show it to you in action. You know you have multiple time frames aligned to the upside. Now, then you look at the quant lines. If you have an alignment to the upside and you have three green quant lines and the 15 is up and the 50 is up, you're going to get an audible alert. You pull up the chart. You don't take a trade, but you know that you're in a position to take a trade. And you can... And so what you're going to do is you're, you're going to be able to go to the heart of an individual trading instrument at a period of time that with multiple time frame alignment when a, sig when a significant entry may appear and you don't miss it. Because that's the problem in trading multiple markets. You get great alignment, but you can't watch all these markets. Now you're going to be able to do it. And this is really a, a major move forward. Bias, a major independent variable in taking a um, successful trade. Each of the quant lines, major independent variables. The, line, the 15, we don't want it to be yellow. We want it to be trending. The 50 is not as important, but we put it in. And I just want you to know, as part of this webinar, part of our special offer, we're going to allow you, let's say there's an indicator that you love that you don't want to trade without, but you like our system. We will allow everybody to give us one indicator. Now the indicator happens to, has to be open source, so we can see the code of the indicator. And it's got to be compatible on the NinjaTrader platform. But, but to your specifications, if the line's going up, we're going to create a new column for you. So we're going to individualize this dashboard. And as you add more markets to the dashboard, it will work on the, on the indicator that you really like. I mean, I, don't, I, I can't think of what it might be, but there might be something that you really think is going to increase the predictive value of your trades. You just let us, let us know what it is. And, and when the line's going up, you, you tell us, we'll code it green. When it's flat, we'll code it yellow. When it's down, we'll code it red. And then you can watch all the independent variables that are necessary for taking a trade on the dashboard. This is a very powerful system. Now, you don't need to trade it, use it to trade. You can just trade in the room like I do. I'm going to be using it. 
but you don't have to use it in your house or trade it uh, in front of your own computer. You'll see it in the trading room, and I am going to move those markets in. We're always going to start with the E-mini and crude, but then if I see an alignment on multiple time frames where the quants align as well, we're going to pull that market over, and we're, and we're going to look to and we're going to look for a trade there. On the, the algorithmic, is totally automatic. This is irrelevant because the system's on auto, and you can also trade both because both will give you a um, positive money flow, and they're both independent sources of revenue. You can trade the discretionary system with or without the dashboard or the algorithmic system. Now, we have some specials. Now, normally, um, the algorithmic trading system is $59.99. Now, that's lifetime on all markets. So as we add markets, you get them. Um, the special, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be $39.99. And with it, you, the algorithm, you get the live trading room for life, and you get the NDT execution platform for life. So essentially, with the algorithmic, you can be in the room, trade on, this, on a discretionary basis, and also get all the algorithmic systems, all the algorithmic entries. On the dashboard, it also includes the live trading room for life, the NDT, and it includes the indicator suite, obviously. Now, it's $59.99 normally, lifetime. We're giving it for $49.99, and we have that other special where you get the custom indicator. And we'll create the indicator and add it to the dashboard. Now, for both of these systems, the algorithmic and the dashboard with the live trading room, we're gonna get, we also have a 798. That's you get three months for the price of two. If you just want to test drive the system and you want to test drive it for 90 days, you only pay for two months, which is 398 a month or 399 a month, and you get a third month for nothing. Now, this, this expires on 423, which is Saturday at noon on, on 5 p.m. And we're going to have somebody in the office all day from noon to 5 on Saturday if you want to call us and ask any questions. This is kind of complicated, but we'll explain to you what you want, what you get with each of these purchases. The, the, the normal prices are on the website. You're, we're going to have to, we will send these links out for the, for the special prices later. Now let me just go to questions real quickly and, and see and see if there are any here. And I'll answer whatever I can. Okay, there are not that many. No, the, oh, okay, the dashboard is not considered an upgrade. That's a brand new product. And honestly, we we spent so many so many months working on it. If we gave it out free as an add-on, we, we would go bankrupt. Um, so it is a it is a brand new system. Just like the algorithmic was brand new, it really is a brand new, and it's really going to shovel winners into you. Hey, Rieger, you don't get the dashboard for free, Rieger, but give us a call. Just give us a call. It is. Um, can the ATM NDT setup instructions be individually uh, formatted for the different markets? Absolutely. You tell. We have recommended inputs, but we w we can format any input you want individually for each market. Remember, each person who trades. Some people trade two contracts. Some people trade four. We have some people trading a twenty-five lot. Some a fifty lot. And they only trade the E-mini. So each market is individualized to the number of contracts you trade, and we will format the ATM. You can take our recommended ATM, or we will format one that you like. Okay, the dashboard is not free to existing members, but just, just give us a call on that. Yes, if you get the three months special off of this webinar, because that's a special, you can still roll it forward to the, um, to the reduced price. We're not going to take that away from you. 
So somebody asked, will today's pricing apply after the three-month trial? And the answer is yes. Now, you're all welcome to come into the trading room. Just go to the website and sign up for a free trial. You'll see how we trade. Um, starting, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll see the dashboard in action. And, you know, you, you can also make um, uh, a determination from that. But you only have until Saturday on the special. And believe me, we're not rushing, rushing you. But we, um, you know, we have to set a limit on the reduced price. So I hope you, everybody got something from the webinar. Be very careful with what you're trading and make sure that it really works, whether you come with us or you don't. And for, for members of our trading system, just give us a call uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it with you. If you're not a member, um, these, are our, these are our special prices and you do get a custom indicator that we format for you. And, and it, it takes work. But anything you want to add on will add on to the dashboard. And this is really kind of a rudimentary. We're going to make this a lot more, we make it a little more complex, more readable, and we're going to eventually go to 12 markets. And if you have a market you want us to add, we may even be able to help you with that. But the, the custom indicator is definitely something we will do for everyone that involves themselves with the dashboard. And the 78, 798 applies to either one algorithmic or the dashboard just just um, we'll send you links with a 798 to each to either one so we know which one you purchased so listen everyone have, have a great after a great evening I don't want to take up more time um, I, I'm, I'm already appreciative to Darla and Trader Planet for letting me have this time so everyone have a wonderful wonderful evening I'm gonna sign off and if you have any additional questions please give us a call take care and have a great evening so long. Thank you, Mark. The recording for this webcast will be posted on Trader Planet's video section tomorrow. Look for the video titled, Algorithmic Trading is Finally Here. Get in and out of trades automatically, exactly like the giant institutions do. Uh, this concludes today's presentation. Thank you for attending, and all of us at Trader Planet and RightLineTrading.com wish you a pleasant evening and a profitable trading day tomorrow.